In the previous lesson, we introduced the concept of utility or happiness in economics, and we talked about how utility can be measured using an imaginary figure or measurement called the util. We also introduced the law of diminishing marginal utility, which as you learned says that as an individual consumes more and more of a good, he gets less additional happiness from each additional unit of the good consumed. This explains why when you have more ice cream, you're willing to pay less for each additional scoop. If each scoop of ice cream is providing with less additional happiness, you'd obviously be willing to pay less for it. The law of diminishing margin utility helps us understand what we are now going to study, which is called the utility maximization rule. This is a simple rule of consumer behavior, which helps consumers decide the optimal combination of two or more goods they should consume, weighing the happiness that each good provides them at every level of consumption against the cost or the price of that good, and trying to maximize the amount of happiness per dollar spent on every good at all times. So here's the rule. This is a way to quantify and calculate the optimal combination of goods and services a consumer should buy given his limited budget. The utility maximization rule says that a consumer should buy goods up to the point where the last dollar spent on every good provided the same marginal utility as the last dollar spent on every other good. What this is basically saying is that you always want to get the most utility per dollar spent on a good, such that the last dollar spent on every good provides the same amount of additional utility as the last dollar spent on every other good. There's a simple way of calculating this or formulating this. We can say that the marginal utility of good A, assuming good A is one of the goods you are choosing between, divided by the price of good A should equal the marginal utility of good B, divided by the price of good B, which should equal the margin utility of good C, divided by the price of good C, and so on. If a consumer can equalize the amount of happiness provided by each dollar spent on every good, then there is no possibility for the consumer to increase his or her total happiness by changing the amount of any particular good that they consume. Another way of looking at this is that if the marginal utility per dollar spent on a particular good, such as A, is greater than the marginal utility per dollar spent on another good, such as B, the logical thing for a consumer to do would be to buy more of good A and less of good B until those two values are equal. What's the rationale here? Well, I'm getting more happiness per dollar or more bang for my buck if I'm getting a greater marginal utility per dollar spent on a particular good. Therefore, I should buy more of that good since it provides me more happiness as I buy more of that good. So here's a typical problem that would require you to use some of the calculations and skills we're talking about in this lesson. We've got a situation here where you have $16 to spend on dessert. You know that ice cream provides you with a certain amount of marginal utility per scoop and that cake provides you with a certain amount of marginal utility per scoop. The question is how much ice cream and how much cake should I buy to maximize my total utility? The first question in this problem actually asks us to determine the total utility of cake and ice cream at each level of consumption. In my table here I'm not given the total utilities, all I'm given is the marginal utilities for each scoop and each slice of cake. It's pretty easy to calculate the total utilities however. If one scoop of ice cream provides me with four utils, then the total utility from the first scoop is four. The second scoop provides me with three additional utils causing my total utility to go up to seven and I can add two to get a total utility of nine utils for the third scoop and my total utility peaks at 10 utils at the fourth scoop of ice cream. All I'm doing is adding up these marginal utilities to get the total utility at every level of consumption. Of course the fifth scoop adds zero marginal utility. I've had plenty of ice cream at this point so I get a total utility of 10 at four scoops at five scoops. I can do the same thing for my cake column. The first scoop of ice cream provided me with 10 utils, so my total utility at one scoop is 10. The second scoop, I can add 8 to that, I get 18. Third scoop, I can add 6 and I get 24. I can add 4 for the fourth scoop, I get 28. And I can add 2 for the fifth scoop for a total utility of 30 utils for five slices, not scoops, sorry, of cake. So if I look just at the utility that cake and ice cream provide me, it's pretty obvious that cake makes me happier. I enjoy cake more than ice cream. 
you might therefore say that I should just buy as much cake as I possibly can with my $16. For example, $16 would allow me to buy at $4 per slice, 4 times 4 equals 16. I could buy 4 slices of cake and get a total utility of 28 utils. Is that the best decision though? The answer is not necessarily, in fact it's not, because the decision should not be based on what provides me with the most utility, rather what provides me with the most utility per dollar. To calculate this I must determine the marginal utility divided by the price for both cake and ice cream at every level of consumption. So let's look at the column here. What do I need to do to find the marginal utility per dollar? The first scoop of ice, ice cream provided me with four utils, but it cost two dollars. So I can divide four by two to get a marginal utility per dollar of two. I'm going to divide the margin utility by the price at every level of consumption to get the margin utility per dollar. So now I can see that the margin utility per dollar for ice cream decreases as the quantity of ice cream I consume increases. Of course the price of ice cream stays the same, but the additional utility I get decreases causing the MU divided by the P to decrease as my consumption increases. Let's do the same thing for cake. I'm going to take the marginal utility of cake and divide it by the price of cake, which is four dollars, to get the marginal utility per dollar. So that gives me a marginal utility per dollar of 2.5 for the first slice of cake, two for the second, and so on. Now I have the information I need to determine the optimal combination of cake and ice cream that I should consume with my $16 budget. And the way I do this is, is I always try to maximize my marginal utility per dollar spent as I consume these two goods. For instance, how should I spend my first few dollars? Should I buy one scoop of ice cream, which provides me with two utils per dollar, or one slice of cake, which provides me with 2.5 utils per dollar. And it's pretty obvious that I should start by consuming a slice of cake since I get more bang for my buck. I had $16, I spent four on cake, now I have $12 left to spend. What should I buy next? Should I buy a second slice of cake, which gives me two utils per dollar? Or should I buy a first scoop of ice cream, which provides me with two utils per dollar? In fact, I can afford both, so I'm going to buy both. I'm going to buy a second slice of cake and a first scoop of ice cream. That's going to cost me $6, so I'm going to subtract 6 from my budget, and I now have $6 left to spend. What should I buy next? Should I buy a third slice of cake, which provides me with 1.5 utils per dollar, or should I buy a second scoop of ice cream, which also provides me with 1.5 utils per dollar? And in fact, I'm indifferent between these, and I can afford both, because the third slice of cake is going to cost me $4, so I'm going to buy that subtract four that leaves me with two dollars left and I'm gonna buy my second scoop of ice cream which costs me two dollars and I have 1.5 utils per dollar subtract two dollars my budget is now exhausted I have no money left and I have in fact bought the optimal combination of cake and ice cream two slices of cake and three scoops of ice cream should provide me with more total utility than if I had bought nothing but cake with my sixteen dollar budget to prove that, let's just do a quick calculation. In fact, that's the last question here. What is the total amount of utility I'd enjoy at the level of consumption at which the marginal utility of ice cream divided by the price of ice cream equaled the marginal utility of cake divided by the price of cake? That actually occurred at quantity of two ice creams and three cakes. That's where the margin utility per dollar spent were equalized. So what's my total utility at this level of consumption? For ice cream I'm going to enjoy seven total utils and for cake I'm going to enjoy 24 total utils so that's seven plus 24 gives me a total utility of 31 utils. Now how does that compare to if I had consumed nothing but cake? Well, look at that. If I consumed nothing but cake, I could have bought four slices of cake for a total utility of 28 utils. So this is better than I could have done by consuming nothing but cake. Even though at first glance, cake makes me happier. It simply provides me with more total utility. What I've shown in this lesson is that consumers' decisions do not weigh only the amount of happiness that particular goods provide them, rather the amount of happiness per dollar. And in order to maximize total happiness or total utility, a consumer must compare the marginal utility per dollar spent on every good. If a particular good provides you with more marginal utility per dollar than a, than a good that you could consume instead of it, you should buy more of the good that provides you with more marginal utility per dollar. That's how I solve these problems as well. 
at every level of consumption, I determined what good would provide me with more happiness per dollar. Not just total happiness, but total happiness per dollar. By equalizing the marginal utilities per dollar spent on every good that I have to choose from, I am going to achieve what I sometimes like to call consumer nirvana. There's no way for a consumer to increase his happiness if at the present level of consumption, the last dollar spent on every good provided the consumer with the same amount of marginal utility. Now, of course, this is a very esoteric way to analyze consumer behavior. In the real world, we don't make decisions based on mathematics always, but we do go to stores, we do go to shopping centers, we do go to places where we can buy stuff and spend our money, and we make these subconscious choices. We're always trying to get the most bang for our buck. This is why we love sales. We like to buy things when they're on sale because they provide us with more marginal utility per dollar. If we bought things when they weren't on sale, then we'd be receiving less marginal utility per dollar since the prices would be higher. You're getting more happiness per dollar spent when prices are lower compared to when prices are higher. Here we go.